Let's offer the fruit of our lips. Hear the sacrifice, the fruit of our lips. Let us offer the fruit of our lips. Hear the sacrifice, the fruit of our lips. Ha 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 ha. You didn't just catch me with a cookie in my mouth, did you? Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, look out. There's a guitar. Greetings, friends and brethren. Paul May is with you. I'm a Christian. It's good to see you. Man. I think I had the wrong microphone. Now I've got to check to see if I got it right. Bear with me just one moment. Bear with me just one moment. Got it. Greetings, friends and brethren. Paul Mays with you. I'm a Christian. Good to see you. Good to have you. Happy Tuesday to you. Did you catch me eating a cookie? You did. There. Well, that's a little bit high. I need to trim my wick again. John Barker gave me some coaching on that. It needs to be a, a V like that instead of a point like that. I know you can do this and this and whatever. Anyway, he said I need to have a V in the wick there to have an even flame and a clean burn and not get this part all black. I hope you're doing well. I am. Let's see who's here. Cookie Monster. Caught me eating them cookies. Jenny's with us. Good to see you. Good to see Rosie Jones with Tuesday Blessings. Well, there is Trevino, Rob. I've been thinking about you. I hadn't seen you in a while. It's good to see you. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. Well, we'll see how long that lasts. Every time Jimmy's on Facebook, he said, I had to switch to YouTube. I told him in a message he needs to go ahead and just, just go to YouTube, just straight off. I don't know if anybody else has trouble with it, but Jimmy always seems to. So Jimmy and I are going to be editing soon. Jimmy and I have a fire song. He sent me some lyrics, and I uh, was on the road. I was in Michigan, and I wrote a melody just right off. It was the day I went to, the day I left Michigan, the day that I was going to. As a matter of fact, I wrote it on the way to... Henry Ford Museum with John Barker. Yeah, yeah, I did. I saved it, just opened up voice recorder and just sang out the lyrics and saved a melody for the verses and the choruses and the chorus. And we need to edit together. Let's see. What's our hymn for today? It is How Sweet the Name of Jesus. It's gentle. It is a gentle, reverent hymn. Hello, Denise. Good to have you. Hello, Tony. Good to see you. So we have a gentle, reverent hymn called How Sweet the Name of Jesus. I've got it loaded up. Yeah, we're going to play the video in just a minute. Um, I don't think we have any other business to attend. If you have a uh, prayer request, you don't have to wait for the end. And we'll pray together at the end, but you don't have to wait till the end. Um, yeah, I think we're all good, all caught up. Super glad you're with me. I'm grateful for the privilege to do this. It's always enjoyable. So, you know what? I will actually. Hmm. 
No. There we go. There we go. I'm going to share this a couple places before we get rolling here. One moment. Okay. Maybe I'll share it in a couple of places. Just a moment. Just see if we can get other folks to join in for our good time that we have. Oh, come on. Deb called me out because we were working together and I said, what in the world? And apparently I say that every five minutes. So Deb caught me on that one. That was pretty fun. Mm. Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. All good. Caught up. All right. But I got to catch up on Shirley's here. Good to see you. And all right. Very good. All right, dude. Good to have you. Very good. Nice to have you. Let's see. All right. I'm on track. I just had to share it a couple places. Want to see if we can get anybody else to join us for our live Bible study today. I just take a little squirrel for just a moment. Then I jump right back on. All right. So I have it loaded up. It's called How Sweet the Name of Jesus. It is tender and gentle, sweet and reverent. I love singing the name of Jesus. Do you? I really do. So we're going to listen to this hymn, and then we're going to look at the scriptures that support every lyric, because when we are singing, we are teaching. That's Colossians 3.16 and Colossians 3.17, and I'm so glad you joined us. So after I get rid of Deb's comment, I will play the hymn. All right, here we go. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. There is much that I can tell of the love He showed for me. He's my Savior. My Redeemer Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels When singing cross my lips Sing of Jesus Sing of Jesus He has come and brought new life For those who believe in Him he the gospel in the water. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. He is coming in the clouds. For his church, the church of Christ, are you ready for the judgment? Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing. Jesus. Amen, church. I love singing about Jesus. 
All right, let's take apart these lyrics by the authority of Scripture, because when we're singing, we're teaching, so we better make sure we have Bible authority for what we are singing and therefore teaching. First lyric in the, uh, the supporting Scripture. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. Philippians 2, 7 through 9. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above Every name. Jesus' name is above all names. I love singing about Jesus. I, I, do you go around daily singing about Jesus? I do. I bet you do. You probably sing all those traditional hymns and any, any of the hymns that I've written or Deb or Shane or Jimmy. Get those hymns that hopefully will be memorable and we'll have you singing about Jesus all day, every day. I know I do. I love it. I love singing about Jesus. How sweet it is. It feels sweet when I sing the name of Jesus. It feels sweet. I mean, it's just right. Singing the one who died for me, who humbled himself, became as a man, even though he was perfect God, humbled himself as a man and was obedient even to the point of death, having done no wrong thing. I love singing about Jesus. How sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing crossed my lips. Sing of Jesus. Sing of Jesus. There is much that I can tell of the love he showed for me. He's my savior, my redeemer. This is how much he loves me. This is how much he loves you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. Jesus saith unto him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is much that I can tell about his love. I can tell about the stripes he took and the mocking and how they struck him on his face. Many scriptures could, could support this lyric here, but there's so much that we could say about Jesus, how he lived a perfectly sinless life. He didn't just die for us. He lived for us, making the right choice every single time. And had he not made the right choice every single time, his blood wouldn't have paid for our sins, but he did. There is much that I can tell of the love he showed for me. He's my savior and my redeemer. He's the way. He's my only hope. He's your only hope too. Let's keep going. All right. Second verse begins. And here it is. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. So each verse starts with that. I guess it'd kind of be a chorus at that point. It is, I guess. <laughs> that's the chorus. I guess, technically. That's what you get with un musically uneducated Paul here. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. <clears throat> Psalm 104, 33. And the second verse. We've got three scriptures to support this lyric. Dube and Rosie both say amen. Amen to that. Amen. So the second verse, he has come and brought new life for those who believe in him. Heed the gospel in the water. You know, there's an implication there. <laughs> I've got jokes coming through in Messenger. It's breaking me up here. Back off. He has come and brought new life for those who believe in him. Heed the gospel in the water. There is an implication there. If you believe, you will heed the gospel. You'll obey the gospel. You'll do whatever Jesus said you must do in order to be saved. If you believe in him, if you believe his words that will judge us, he has come and brought new life for those who believe in him. Heed the gospel 
in the water. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's brought new life there. He brings us new life. When? Well, when we get into Christ. That's when we become, be, we become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. <clears throat> and then also... These two scriptures here about new life and believing in him. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Romans 10, 16. Uh, that follows Romans 10, 13 that says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Appeal to his authority. Believe in him enough to obey the gospel. Reenact that death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to become a new creature because you got into Christ. That's Romans 6, 3 and 4. And then Mark 16, 15 and 16. And he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16 and 15 and 16. Back that up a little bit. He's come and brought new life for those who believe in him. Heed the gospel in the water. Believe in Jesus enough to obey the gospel, to heed the gospel, to take him up on his offer for salvation. Do it. Yeah, believe in Jesus enough to do whatever he said you must do. And then you will be in Christ, a new creature. Raised to walk in newness of life, Romans 6, 3 and 4. Old things will have been passed away. I just muted you. You will be quiet. There we go. Much better. One more time with my squirrels. Back it up a little bit. How sweet the name Jesus feels when singing across my lips. Sing of Jesus. Sing of Jesus. He has come and brought new life for those who believe in him. Heed the gospel in the water. When you believe in Jesus, you will do whatever it takes to benefit from his perfect saving blood. That's belief coupled with and evidenced by obedience, which is faith. So the chorus again. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus. Sing of Jesus. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. 1 Corinthians 14, 15 goes hand in hand with our Colossians 3, 16 and 17 theme of sing, teach, admonish, whatever we do must be by the authority of Jesus Christ. Third verse. He is coming in the clouds for his church, the church of Christ. Are you ready for the judgment? He's coming in the clouds one day, y'all. We can know this because 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. So we know we're proving this, that all these lyrics are the doctrine of Christ, that we're singing the truth. Here we go. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then... We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 8 through 18. He's coming in the clouds. We know this. What for? For his church, the church of Christ. You know what that's not? It's not a name. It's a designation of ownership. He's coming for his church, the church that belongs to Christ. That's the same thing. He's coming for his church. He's coming for the church of Christ. His church is synonymous with the church of Christ, the church that belongs to Christ. So when he's coming in the clouds, he's coming for his church, which is also called his one holy bride. Two more scriptures to support that. Hey, Kelly Joe, good to have you. Amen, says Rosie Jones, following along here, having our Bible study, a sermon and song. Again, that's what we do here on the fruit of our lips. So the next scripture that would support that lyric, he's coming in the clouds for his church, the church of Christ, 
And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. So it's just a designation of ownership. That's who he is coming for. When he comes in the clouds, that First Thessalonians uh, 4, 16 through 18 passage, he's coming in the clouds for his church, the church of Christ. I say unto thee that thou Peter, art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16, 18. Also, Romans 16, 16. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. All that's synonymous. He's coming for his church, his one holy bride. He built his church. It still it stands because he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, so they can't. And it is the church of Christ, the church that belongs to Christ. So when he comes in the clouds, he's coming for his church, the one that belongs to him, his one holy bride. So how we are we that one church? How are we? Because I don't want to be part of a denomination. Denominations aren't part of Christ because they're divided, and that's just fundamentally against Christ. Being divided is just fundamentally against Christ. That's First John, uh, sorry, John 17, 20 through 23. And 1 Corinthians 1, 10 through 13. So how, how are we that one church? Whoever, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So the groups that have their man-made manuals and their man-made creed books and their man-made catechisms and go to each other for doctrine, they don't have God. But he that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. That's how we're the church of Christ. It's by abiding in the doctrine of Christ. It really is that simple. Abide in the doctrine of Christ to be the church of Christ. How sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. He's coming back. He's just coming to get his one bride. Jesus is not a polygamist. He's not an adulterer. He doesn't have a harem of denominations. He does not. No, he's coming back for his bride. He's the bridegroom. We are the bride. If we abide in the doctrine of Christ. And the hymn ends by repeating the chorus one more time. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus. Sing of Jesus. We're going to listen to it one more time after we get the final scripture that supports it, which is the title of my life's work. It's the title of this broadcast. It is the title of my upcoming thousand song hymnal. It's in the works. We're a, probably a quarter of the way there. More than the fruit of our lips. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Hebrews 13, 15. I love singing about Jesus. Don't you? Do you save it just for Sundays? No, I don't. No, I walk around singing. You know I do because I'm writing the songs about him. But I love walking around just singing songs about Jesus. I love it. I love to live it daily. It's good. It's good for us. Keeping him in our hearts singing about him, singing to him, singing how wonderful he is, singing of his amazing, terrible, selfless, sacrificial death and his amazing, beautiful, selfless life. Jesus. I love singing about Jesus. All right. Let's listen to it one more time. We have proven that that's the doctrine of Christ. Now the lyrics will make a little more sense as we go. Let me get that comment off of there. Amen, sis. Glad you're with us. Glad you're with me in Christ. Being part of that one church of the Bible. All right, so we've listened to it. Then we studied all the scriptures that support the lyrics. Now it's time to listen to it one more time. No. This. Here we go. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. There is much that I can tell of the love He showed for me. He's my Savior. My Redeemer Oh, how 
sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. He has come and brought new life for those who believe in him. He the gospel in the water. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus, sing of Jesus. He is coming in the clouds. For his church, the church of Christ, are you ready for the judgment? Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus feels when singing cross my lips. Sing of Jesus. Sing. Of Jesus. Amen, church. I hope you'll sing of Jesus all the time. I know I do. It's good for us. It is so good for us. All right. Well, there you are. Hello, CJ. Amen. Amen to singing about Jesus. All right, so uh, we have a short message today, so we're going to get dismissed early. Um, I do have um, some prayers that I'm going to offer, and um, make sure I'm not missing anything on my prayer requests. Got to write down notes. I don't want to miss anything. Just a second. Yeah. All right. Amen, says Tony. Yep. Love to sing about Jesus. You know, I, I failed to mention that one lyric. Um, are you ready for the judgment? We better make sure we are ready. Get ready and stay ready. That's what I like to teach and we better get right with God, and we better stay right. You know, my sister passed away in 2003, I believe it was. She was a faithful Christian, and when she was on her deathbed, she rebuked me because I was not a faithful Christian. I was living in sin. She knew it, and I'd gone back and forth. I'd tried to repent. I would repent, then I'd fall away. And she was laying on her deathbed. She was only 44 when she died. She was laying on her deathbed. She pointed up at me. She's laying on her deathbed and she pointed up at me and she said, you need to get straight and you need to stay straight. She's very firm with me on that. Then she followed by saying, my boys are looking at you. She had sons, had, she has sons that were looking to me because they were young at the time, very young. I want to say nine and 11, maybe something like that. And that's a vivid memory. It was very encouraging for me to get straight and stay straight. And I did. I encourage everybody to get right with God, obey the gospel, meet his terms for salvation, and then walk in the light. So your sins will be continually forgiven by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's worth it. No matter what it is, it'll be worth it. So just to uh, relay his terms for salvation, this is what everybody did in the book of Acts. Everybody heard the good news about Jesus Christ, about his death after his perfect life, that Jesus was sent by God, his only son, that he lived a perfectly sinless life. He was crucified on a Roman cross, that they put him in the tomb for three days. His body was dead there and God raised him. He was raised by the glory of the Father on the third day. People heard that good news. They knew that they had been taught that 
he had to go to the cross for their sins. He had to go for my sins and yours. They believed that good news, and they were willing to confess belief in that good news before others. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, like the Ethiopian eunuch did in Acts chapter 8, verse 37. They repented of their sins. They made a change of mind that resulted in a change of behavior. They decided they weren't going to live for self. Then they went to the water because Jesus said that their sins would be forgiven if they did so in faith. Go to the water in faith, believing that Jesus is who he said he is and that he will do what he said he will do. And then get your sins forgiven by his perfect blood. The blood forgives the sins when we go to the water. Then walk in the light. I encourage you to get straight, get right with God, obey the gospel, and then walk in the light. If you do that, try, confess to God continuously, then the blood of Christ continuously cleanses us of our sins. That's 1 John 1, 7 and 9. Amen. All right. Wait a second. Oh, I missed some comments there while I was proclaiming the terms of salvation by the authority of Jesus Christ. Good to see you, Tammy. All right. Okay. All right. So Rob has a Rob's new evangelism website. All right. CJ requests prayers that he teaches the truth. Yeah, we'll ask for wisdom. Yeah, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and upbraideth not. Amen. Get right, stay right. I've got a piece of a hymn. All, it is, all I have for it. No, I do have more for it. I sat on it for a long time from my sister's admonition from her deathbed, and what I had for it for a long time was... You need to get straight. You need to stay straight for there are others looking up to you. You need to get straight. You need to stay straight. You need to do what God would have you to. That's all I had for it for a long time. I think I maybe only had half of that, actually. And I think I wrote more, but I can't remember. Got so many songs. After baptism, to be faithful. Do your best and God will do the rest. Amen, Betty. That's brilliant. And that's walking in the light. That's 1 John 1, 7 and 9. Amen. Very good. All right. Thanks, Rosie. I'll finish it. I'll finish them all. I'll keep going to, well, you know I won't finish them all. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep writing and then eventually my body will give out and I'll probably have a, a body of uh, written out work with scraps of recordings here and there and the ones who are uh, encouraged by my work will probably follow behind me and make sure they, that some of them get done. But hopefully, hopefully I will have encouraged others to write using their God-given talents to the point where they don't have time to do mine. And I got mine done that I could get done while I was alive. And then it's their turn to get after it. All right. All right, so I've got a list of prayer requests, and we're going to go to God in prayer now. I'm so glad you're with us today for another broadcast of the Fruit of Our Lips. Let's pray together. We'll be quiet for just a minute, then we'll pray together. God, we humbly approach your throne of grace and mercy, recognizing that you are God. We're so grateful for your love and your power, your will for our lives, and we are grateful that you have given it to us in the Bible. We're so grateful for Jesus Christ, and we love to sing about your Son. And it does feel sweet to sing the name of Jesus. When we sing that name, it feels sweet because we know that he is our source of eternal life. We know he's the way. And he's the answer. He's the one mediator. He is the one son that you sent to pay for our sins. We know that no other sacrifice would do. We're so grateful for Jesus Christ. Father, we have several names to lift up to you in prayer today. 
Brother Robert Ridgway, your servant in Tennessee, he is battling cancer. We love him, and we pray that you would heal him. Father, your servant Russell is battling cancer. We are grateful for his teaching of the truth, that he sticks with your doctrine, that he teaches the doctrine of Christ, that he teaches truth. We're grateful for him. We pray that you would bless him with recovery from this illness and that he would continue to be the good servant that he is. Father, we pray for Darlene and for John. Please bless his mind and bless her strength as she cares for him. It's hard. We know it is. We love her. We love your servant, Darlene. Please bless her. Father, there's a bunch of flooding, and people have lost their lives and their homes, and their families are separated from one another, and it is tragic and, and terrifying and sad. And we pray for those folks there to get the relief that they need and that we would do something. We would be the support that they need. PTP is coming up. We're so excited about polishing the pulpit in Sevierville. I can't wait to go. Um, Father, please bless me with a safe trip, and please bless everyone who's traveling there with a safe trip. Bless all the speakers who are preparing their messages. Bless them to deliver great, powerful messages. Thank you for the privilege to teach my songs there. May that go well. May the church receive them and take them out and lead them in their assemblies. Please bless Brother Rob Trevino's website, evangelism website that's upcoming. Please bless that to be a blessing to all those who click it. Help them to learn the truth there, to obey the truth, to become Christians, and help all those who are benefiting from that website to be strong, teach the truth, and obey the truth, and walk in the light. CJ is requesting prayers that he would teach the truth. Please bless CJ with continued diligent study and continued growth in wisdom and knowledge of your word. Thank you for giving CJ uh, the tools to get the work done that he needs to, and thank you for his dedication to doing this. Thank you for his service. Thank you for Levi's tireless service. Thank you for O'Shea's tireless service. Bless them all as they work together to glorify your name. Father, we just want to please you and serve you and, and be approved by you. We want others to come to know you, and we pray that you would bless our work, that it would result in many souls obeying you, becoming Christians, walking in the light, serving you all of their days, and ultimately hearing, well done. We just want to enter into heaven with you, Lord. Father, thank you for your elders. Thank you for appointing elders, or rather describing elders that we can appoint. Thank you for giving us the leadership that is suitable for your congregations of your churches, your church. Thank you for giving us your church. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you that he paid for the church with his perfect sinless blood. Lord, we love you. We love being your children. We love being spiritual family. We pray that you would hear this prayer and answer this prayer, Father. It's through Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Yep, it was a short teaching hymn. We got through it. Got through it right quick. I think the, the message was done in about 25 minutes. It was a short one. How sweet the name of Jesus. All right. I love you all. I'm so grateful that you are with us for another episode of The Fruit of Our Lips, where we study original acapella teaching hymns. We compare the lyrics to the authority of scripture. It's a blessing. It's a blessing that you joined me. All right, it's time to go mow the grass and, and get to the post office. And, 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 so much to do. All right, love y'all so much. See you, Rosie. Glad you're with us. We'll see you next time. I'm Paul Mace, and I'm a Christian.